in arms, leg, and skull late last month. Police report that paramedics and officers were called to carry I wasn't a smart to find like a three-month-old had suffered Same time as every month. Tonight on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show, we are live at Buffalo Wild Wings for another jam-packed edition of the sports show. We'll talk to Randy O'Neill about the upcoming Belmont horse race. Plus, we'll have some Madison Central baseball players come over and update us on how their season went. A lot to talk about was not here on the show last week, but we're back today at Buffalo Wild Wings. We'll be back in a moment, folks. This is the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. This is a special sports presentation of the winning. Nervin is your year-round stop. We are rebranding our sports show we are. with we that name now. and uh, new Not really new sponsor. He's well, been a sponsor, but he's he likes our show so much he wants to do more. Well, he really, really, really likes one of the hosts, and it's not you. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It would be Randy. It's Randy, yeah, that's Randy. It would be Randy. Randy is Randy's here. here as much as we are anymore. Well, that's because he is a horse racing expert. Now you, you had the. Did you have the winner of the Belmont? I wouldn't Belmont? say expert. Did you have the winner of the Belmont or the, uh, the Preakness? The, yes, I picked. Yeah. I picked War Will. That's just what I thought. See, I, 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 we should have gone with what he told us. Well, I can't. I can't. I may have. I can't remember. I play so many. That means today. he lost when he lose a lot suddenly too. can't remember. Well, let's talk about how that race went. Obviously, um, seemed like. It, obviously, there was not as much publicity as there was for the Derby, but it seemed like everything went pretty well, especially with the horse that, that pulled it out. It did, and I, and I think the right, the, the deserving horse won the yeah. race. We, of course, has, have War of Will back in the Belmont. Uh, you know, as we discussed then, when you don't have the, the triple crown effect and you don't have some big storyline to carry you through, usually the triple crown races start losing steam a little bit. Yeah. and. and at least this year we did have the big controversy. I think that kept a lot of people on the hook. Uh, people yeah. still probably tuned in, but they said that the, that the uh, viewership was down something like 20% compared to last year where we had just five bidding for a triple crown. Going after that triple crown, And, and right. so the same is going to happen with the Belmont. I, I'm afraid it's probably going to be the viewership's going to be down tremendously this year because you don't really have – question is what is the story of, of the Belmont there's yeah. not a big story it's the lack the lack thereof is more so than anything you, you don't have country house you don't have maximum security a lot of people were hoping we get that rematch maybe in the in the Belmont they so neither one of them are going to be both decide to pass yeah. on it so it's really uh you know you, you have a couple horses that ran in the derby they're now coming back that skipped the Preakness and and and, uh, and uh, pointed toward the Belmont and then you have a couple of horses that did run in the Preakness, like War of Will, they're coming back. Uh, so it's really the, the story is the lack of a story, uh, right. essentially, with it. And and I, I, I hate that because I think the casual viewer, the casual fan of horse racing may not even tune in. They may not watch it. Of course, you know, anyone who's involved with it and follows horse racing, you know, year-round, that kind of thing. Right. You know, you're involved. Because you would think us here in Kentucky, we'd be really excited about it. But until Michael and I talked about it today, I was like, oh, yeah, it's yeah. the Belmont. 
Right, and, and I'd forgotten. And the fact of the matter is the, the Belmont may not even be the biggest race of the day on the race card that they have. The undercard is going to be, you know, ex excellent. Right. And they have some races for older horses that, that may even be better than the than the Belmont. But, you know, the casual, <laughs> the casual fan who, uh, you know, who just, you know, tunes in for the Triple Crown races, you know, they don't pay attention right. to the undercard for the most part. Right. And, and that's a shame. But, uh, you know, I was... I was hoping there would be some hype coming in, but really the hype is the lack of hype. You know, what what are we watching? Um, really, the 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 one thing that we are watching is see if War of Will, of course, can can win the uh, can win the Preakness and Belmont. If he does, he'll he'll only be, I think, the twelfth horse. One to, of twelve, yeah, won, that's what I read today won too. Won both of them after losing the Derby, and, and he was so close in the Derby. Who knows how things may have changed. Without the uh, floppy track and the when without being cut off, and he's the horse off. that actually was cut off by maximum security. Yeah. Right. So who knows what may have happened in that? And you have uh, the other kind of storyline is is you have uh, three horses who are sired by Tappet in this race, and of the last five years, three of the horses of the last five years have been sired by Tappet. The only the only other two being two Triple Crown winners in, in American Pharaoh and Justify. So he's got some super. Are we allowed to say it? S <laughs> no. No, nope. we can't say that no, on the radio. We don't say that. And on television, no. <laughs> Let me just say he's got some serious horse there power. Yeah. His pedigree yeah. is suited well for the distance. There you go. Yeah. I don't, don't want to get us distance, in trouble. The Belmont is the longest out of the three races, correct? It is the longest, a mile and a half. And it's, it's also, Belmont's the oldest of the Triple Crown okay. races, actually. Um, the, the, uh, the Derby and also the Preakness uh, are about six, seven years, came along about six, seven years later. Um, so the the Belmont, it, you know, is is you know kind of the the original big race, and it's uh, the longest race, and, and right? It's the longest Did race. I read and, that right? And re the the thing is, most of these horses may not be running this distance ever again. It's usually, for the most part, well, almost guaranteed, this is the first time that these three year olds have ran a mile and a half. That's that's one of the things that makes it an interesting race. And then most of these horses are not going to turn around and run a mile and a half probably ever again in their career. It's, it's kind of a a uh, once in a lifetime thing for them and it's part of you know that's part of what makes the triple crown so difficult is you have these horses actually kind of get out of their comfort zone and run this mile and a half uh, other than secretariat back in the day i guess and, well and here <laughs> here you have sure. here you have and and there's some selective kind of breeding that that you know that that lends toward that distance and that some stamina horses and that's where th where these horses by tappet have you know have been so so fantastic in this um, with you have Tacitus, which is by Tappet, and Tacitus will actually probably end up going off as the favorite over War of Will, mm -hmm. who won the Preakness, which is that happens sometimes, but just because that you know they look at the pedigree, and Tacitus oh, is yeah. just loaded loaded up with pedigree. What about Intrepid Heart? And Intrepid Heart is also by yeah. Tappet, right? Um, and then you also have Bourbon War. I don't think Bourbon War has much of a chance. Uh, I think Intrepid Heart could, you know, as a long shot, could. Could have a decent chance for the odds. Uh, there's Intrepid Heart won the Peter Pan at Belmont, and there's there's kind of a uh, history of horses who who win or actually finished third in the Peter Pan. But horses who usually do do decent in the Peter Pan turn around and do pretty good in the Belmont. Uh, now, when is the Peter Pan? Is the that Peter Pan like was I think two months two, ago. Okay. So well, I was thinking a couple of weeks ago. So Intrepid Heart is trained by Pletcher, and that that's Intrepid Heart. Was, you know, was pointed directly at run the Belmont. That was the plan. Um, so, you know, a horse like that, you have to kind of, con you know, have to consider as a long shot. But I think Tacitus with, I mean, Tacitus is just uh, just uh, covered with pedigree uh, out of a uh, graded stakes uh, mare. And, and both horses, you know, they can run all day, uh, Taffet and the mare that he's out of. So I, I think that, I think that horse is really going to be intriguing. And it's owned by Judmont Farms, and kind of the interesting thing about Judmont is Judmont's had had three horses. They they've raced three horses in the Belmont, and they never had one finish worse than third. And so, you know, you've got the Taffet <laughs> it's connection. Good history. You've got the the Judmont uh, connection on it, and then they won actually. Judmont won with Empire Maker, and so you put all that together, and this horse ended up finishing third in the Kentucky Derby. Actually, it was the fourth one to to cross the wire, oh, right. but after the uh, after everything was sorted out, disqualification right. finished third. Uh, so I, I, I can see why that horse will go off as the favorite. Although it's hard to overlook War of Will and Tyler Gaffleyone. This is his first Belmont, of course. And he's riding War of Will. He's riding War of Will, and 
so it's it's hard, and that's also Mark Cassie's first first time he's ever had a horse he's in the, the Belmont. Trainer. He's the trainer, and he actually has two in. He'll right. probably at some point in time be a Hall of Fame trainer. So, question: Why would you have a new jockey on this horse? War of Will. Tyler Gaffleon has been on War of Will. Okay, so he's all, he's just never run in the Belmont. Before. He's just he's just ne okay, he's never had a mount in the Belmont. Oh, gotcha. And so, you know, that's and Tyler Gaffleon's a jockey I followed down at Gulfstream. He's been. He's always been a, a very good jockey down there, and now he's finally hitting the national scene. He had last year at Breeders' Cup, he had a couple mounts. The year before, he had one mount at Breeders' Cup, so he was kind of relatively unknown on national scene. And now he's had Derby mount, Preakness <laughs> yeah, mount, now won he's the known. Preakness. Wow. <laughs> and then now he's going into the Belmont, and uh, what will probably be the second favorite in the Belmont. So, uh, I, of course, I'm rooting for him. I, I hope he does well. Yeah. You know, kind of the other storyline that you may get and, and hopefully it'll draw some national attention to the Belmont is Master Fencer ran the Derby. Derby, That was a horse that qualified for the Derbies from Japan. And so oh, they have yeah. a points race now in Japan that you get Derby qualifying points for. And so that horse qualified for the Derby through winning the race in Japan. And so that horse skipped the Preakness and now it's coming back to running the Belmont. So... You know, there's a huge international uh, horse racing audience. Hopefully, they'll capture some of that and draw in some some of the uh, money from Japan and some of these international. Uh, it's a very popular sport in Japan too, isn't J it? Japan, China, uh, you know, Europe. Uh, I mean, horse racing's big in those countries. Right. Um, and so, hopefully, it'll it'll draw in some interest from some bigger international than our interest. basketball right. or football. I and, guess. So that's kind of the other, other interesting story. And that, that horse does have a decent shot, I think. Um, it finished sixth in the Derby after, after everything was sorted out. So I, I don't think that's it's when you can really finish. It's not a bad finish. Right. Well, yeah. well, let me ask you this. So two questions. First of all, you talked about this being the longest of the, the, the Triple Crown races. Will, will that affect some of these horses, you think? Or could, could that create the possibility of an upset more than the, the, Ooh, the shorter races would? Good well, question. What happens, believe, believe it or not, Horses that run kind of closer to the to the pace and the horse on the lead, those horses are typically horses don't come very from way off the lead typically to win the Belmont. Uh, you would think in a race of this distance that you know, you'd have some horse, horses coming from way off the lead, 10, 12 lengths back, but usually that doesn't happen. Yeah, uh, it's hard for a pace setter to win the race though, just to stay up there and on on the pace and, and go wire to wire. That's hard to do, which of course Justify did that last year. So usually what happens is you'll have some, some horses come from just off the pace, five, six lengths back, and that's about as far back as you're going. If, if, when, when you make the clubhouse turn, if, you, if you're any further back than that, it's going to be hard for you to, to, catch to make up. a run. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's a couple long shots that will probably try to be the pace setter in the race. Okay, try should to get you write the these down? Uh, Randy's going to text me whenever he gets okay, to okay, text me. Uh, okay. I think one of those. He hasn't given us who he's betting on yet. That, well, we'll get that. One of those may be Tax. I think Tax is one that, that I think has some front end speed. And uh, and I, I think that's that's a horse you can see them try to put out on the lead. Uh, it's just that's a long race to try to go wire to wire on. Um, and then, of course, you know, my pick, on, I think my pick will probably be War of Will. I until that horse proves me wrong, <laughs> right. that's the horse I'm going to stick with. The, you know, there's every reason in the world to bet Tastus, and I can see why that horse will probably go off as the favorite, just just pedigree alone. Yeah. If you didn't see anything else on the horse, you didn't look at what he's done in any of the previous uh, races, uh, just uh, being out of close hatches and and uh, and by tap it, that horse is just bred to run forever. So it's hard to bet against that horse, but and so I, I get well, it will probably be the favorite. Um, you know, as far as a long shot, though, I, I think Intrepid Heart definitely has a, you know, has a it's shot a as name. a long shot. It's a good name. Um, I, that's, you know, you'll have uh, John Velasquez is going to be the jockey, and he, he always, he, John Velasquez is actually the jockey that was thrown off his horse in the Preakness. Okay, yeah. And, and you know, the uh, horse ran yes. the, nope. without him. <laughs> ran yeah. him twice, right? Ran, <laughs> ran two or three times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, this is so long, I don't know if he could run two or yeah. three so, times. Uh, but Maybe. John Velasquez is an excellent jockey, so. I, I th and Bourbon War has Mike Smith uh, oh, yes. in the mount, but the I, I just don't think that horse has what it takes. Uh, you can't ever count He's Mike Smith He's won the Belmont, out, but, though, three times. Yeah, so I, you can't count Mike Smith out, but I, I think uh, Bourbon War, I just think, is a little... It's a good name I think, for us Kentucky folks. Yeah. I think uh, he's a little uh, over his head uh, with the Belmont, though. So. so you're thinking War of Will? 
War of Wills, who I like, uh, just because you know, until you Attack. until you prove me wrong, uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. stick with you. And I'm big, wrong, don't fix it. Right. I'm a big Tyler Gaffley on uh, fan, and and so and he I, could make history if I, he wins. And I mean. I'm I'm hoping to see him see him get the win. Uh, Master Fencer will be one that you know that horse does have a shot, uh, but I I think I think he'll be between Tacitus or War of Will. Uh, you may throw Intrepid Heart in there as a long shot because that, that horse definitely has a shot. So. You can do a trifecta. There you go. You may. There you go. <laughs> War of Will is the pick once again for Randy as we uh, look at the upcoming Belmont. And uh, should be an interesting race again. Not as publicized or even criticized, I guess, as far as the Derby. No. Uh, it's got a big purse, though. It does. It does. Yeah, well, like 1.5 million or something. Right. Yeah, the I, winner I gets 800. Would you run a mile and a half for $800,000? That might be the only way I run a mile and a <laughs> half. Me too. Yeah. I don't even think we could run a mile and a half. I don't half. think so either. I'm we, out. We are live at Buffalo Wild Wings today, as always. Uh, if you're <laughs> looking for a great burger, great place to watch a ball game. Obviously, the NBA Finals, the NHL Finals going on right now. Oh, if yeah. you're a baseball fan, we're right in the heart of baseball season now. No better place to come out and watch a ball game than Buffalo Wild Wings here in the Richmond Center. And we are now presented by Jack Burford Chevrolet. This is the Jack Burford Chevrolet uh, sports show here on WBON TV. Uh, Randy says War of Will will come through once again, so you can follow him. I'm going advice. with that. And uh, he did not right scare you wrong in the prick or in the, right. uh, the prickness. So hopefully we'll get this one right again, my man. All right, thanks for having me. <laughs> Appreciate it. That's Randy O'Neill with his uh, horse racing expertise. I when feel we, like we've learned a lot. Well, every time every I talk to Randy, here. I get a little bit more smart. But then every time I turn around and talk to you, it goes away. <laughs> so you know, that's just that's just how. See I what I deal with. Every week. <laughs> Listen, we'll take a short commercial break. When we come back, we've got four <laughs> young men that were really integral in the season that Madison Central Baseball had. They were ranked in the top ten the majority of the year. They knocked off the top-ranked team in the state at one point. So why have these guys come on and talk with us about how their season went. When we come back, we are live at Buffalo Wild Wings. This is the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. At King Brothers Used Cars in Winchester, you don't have to worry about the hassles of dealing with an aggressive salesman. They strive to make you feel comfortable and help you find the car you're looking for at the best price possible. Stop by today and get your key and drive off in a new-to-you vehicle from King Brothers Used Cars on West Lexington Avenue in Winchester. Or stop by their Facebook page for updates and their website, kingbrotherscars.com, to check out their inventory. King Brothers Used Cars, family-owned and time-tested since 1966. Ponchels in Irvin is your year-round stop for Carhartt Eyeside Lee jeans and boots. Prepare yourself for hunting with a huge selection of Carhartt bibs, coats, and other hunting gear. Don't forget about the big selection of hunting and work boots from Wolverine, Justin, Rocky, and more. As always, Honchels carries all the latest in Kentucky and Estill Engineer apparel and Skechers and New Balance for the little ones. The same great staff, same great personalized service, always at Honchels on the Richmond Road in Irvin. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606-66. 662990. Escape to sports with Buffalo Wild Wings. GM Tommy Martin invites you to come watch your favorite team play at Buffalo Wild Wings. The best game day atmosphere and happy hour in town. Menu items as low as $2 each each weekday, 2 to 7, and again 10 till close. Plus, wing specials every Tuesday and Thursday. Don't forget to ask your server about the Blazing Rewards program and see how you can earn free food. Buffalo Wild Wings, Richmond Center. Center. And Samantha, you know, we're you in barely the, made it back. 
Um, yeah, I got, I'm trying to set us up for these guys to get on the show. They're going to be out here in just a few moments. I was talking to Randy. You did all the work. That's usually how Which it is works. It's usually how it works. So let's be honest. I'm the talker. Yeah. You're the doer. You and Austin. Listen, let's, you know, this is, we're kind of in the year now where we're not really talking Kentucky uh, basketball. But we are. A but little. Today, but we got some news last week that we've got some guys right. returning. They pulled their Good names news. out of the draft. Which we both said they both need to come back. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I don't I don't think it was even a question that both of them needed to come back. Now, I have no problem with them putting their names in the draft because what you do, what you've seen in the NBA in right. recent years is these people who will draft on potential. And if you ask me, AJ Montgomery has a lot of potential, and Nick Richards has shown potential. Yeah. They've just never really done it consistently. So those two guys announced they will be coming back. And you know, with, with the team that Kentucky has coming in, it's going to be exciting. I wrote them all is. down today because I was like, it makes me excited well, about it there, basketball. Please. Well, you got Hagens and Quickly. That's an, that's an experienced backcourt now. That is. Defense, and, and I think and who will, will go? Hagens didn't play too well at the end of the well, season. Well, the way he played for the most part of the year, I think Hagens has got to be the starter. He's, his defense was really the catalyst for Kentucky and a lot of right. the big wins they had. And quickly, I think, is more suited to come off the bench and kind of be that you know that, that guy that can give you some energy off of the bench. So That is true. You're right. All right, and then you've got your uh, Tyrese Maxey and Johnny – Jose- we gotta, Jose- I got to learn to say yeah, his Johnny's name. Yeah, Johnny's probably not going to get much playing time either way. I still got to learn to say his name. Yeah, but now Maxie <laughs> is a guy that everybody's excited about. Him and Whitney both are two athletic guys. Yeah. And I they can go really either position, right? guard or small forward. And I right. think Whitney or, or one of those guys can even run some point guard. Maybe it's Maxie that can even run some point guard at times as well. Where, and I think that that will be important because quickly – it seemed like last year he was more suited to kind of play off the ball a little bit. Him and Hagen yes. could kind of play together. I think that could be big if Maxi can run some point and have quickly either play that two guard position or he yeah. could either he could either do that or play the point I like guard it. spot. Yeah. I like that. So. You, you call, call Coach Cal and tell him that. I'll give him a ring. And then you got Dante Allen. So you know if Whitney's not now he yeah. might redshirt. Now Allen is a guy too. I think that will scare some folks. Uh, you know, with coming off the injury, I don't know. Right. He may even redshirt. And then he year. just that's what I just yeah, said. He may even with his shirt. car accident, you just see that he had a month or two ago. Yeah. You know, you just never know. And then you got EJ Montgomery and Brooks. And then Richards and Stetson. And and I think that that's a name I'm gonna have to learn how to that's pronounce. That's a guy too. I think that could it's gonna be a really big X factor for us this year. He's got some experience. Both have experience, especially the Nate. So. Yeah. Uh, so how do you say it? Stietzna, I think. I don't know. <laughs> you I, don't I, know I, I'm not saying it. it. You wrote down something different. I don't think no, that's how you spell his last I, name. Uh, S-E-S-T-I-N-A. Sestina. Sestina. That's how it sounds like right there. That's bad that we don't know that, though. But yeah, he transferred in from Bucknell, a guy that can kind of yeah. play that Reed Travis role. Now, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the Blackshear guy from Virginia Tech, I think okay, he is yes. still out there. He is still out if there. If we can somehow get him to come to Kentucky, would be so big because that's a guy who could really be he could be our PJ Washington this year, a guy that we throw the right. ball down to and he could play and say, immediately. Go get us some points. Like you don't exactly. you, he's not sitting on the bench. Yeah. He's coming in, he's playing he's immediately. Start. He, he would probably start yeah. with Montgomery coming in yeah. next year. And then out on Twitter, I guess this weekend or today, Ashton Hagard's Hag I can't talk. Ashton Hagen says he's switching numbers. So he's okay. going from number two to in the sophomore year he's gonna be number zero. Okay. So like in that, that way if Whitney wants to be his high school number. He could be number oh, two because apparently cool. in high school he was number two. Well, that's pretty so cool. So if he chooses, is, I guess, yeah. yeah. But Ashton Hagens is definitely switching to zero. Well, he tweeted that out. What? Which player are you most looking forward to watching next year? Like out of all of those guys, which one are you most looking forward to watching? Maxie. I think so too. I think Maxie's a guy that everybody is going to be excited about. Yeah. Now, our poll question today is Austin to pull up our. Facebook poll question for us. The law office of Patrick O'Neill Facebook poll. We'll have him pull that up for us. And uh, today the question was. I shared it today, but I didn't vote. I'm anxious to see the results. So the results are kind of interesting because our question today was which of the the two players that announced they were coming back, Nick Richards or Jim Montgomery, which of those two guys are you most excited about coming back? 80% of the voters say Montgomery, 20% say Richards. And I, I. I think the reason for that is because people are, are are done waiting on Richards to kind of show Step up. Step up, yeah. show up. They're that's tired the of the inconsistency part. with yeah. him. So I think that's the reason that Montgomery got so many of the votes. He's just not giving us that extra effort that we require as 
a basketball team. Yeah, and, and Richards is a guy that has shown the potential, and I think that makes us even more angry because you've shown that you can you've block shots, a couple rebound, of games. and score, <laughs> but you, you can't put it together for three or four games at a time. It's one game, then you have five bad games. Yeah. So, and – I think a lot of that I think it's a been, lot mental for him. Well, and, and I think playing time too, because his playing yeah. time was kind of sporadic. He never really could get in the flow. Yeah. So I think if he got consistent He's cold minutes, coming off the bench. he could be a guy that you know that, that had a bigger impact. Yeah, and then this week they also you know out on Twitter land they posted that Brad Calipari's put his name in for the, the transfer. transfer portal, yeah. So that's kind of sad for all of us that kind of like that whole family aspect of it. Yeah. But I get it. Well, he could go and possibly play somewhere. You know, he's not going to play. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Wouldn't you? You, know, you, I, you want to be already. with your dad, but wouldn't you want to play instead of sitting on the bench? Our, I mean, in practice, you're going to be playing with some of the greatest. Yeah, but. you're going to just watch some great practices, too, let alone games you're going to be involved <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. But our Facebook poll today is brought to you by the law office of Patrick O'Neill. He can help you with deeds and wills, workers' compensation cases, criminal defense, social security benefits, disability cases, and more. Call 606-666-2990 for a free consultation. That is the law office of Patrick O'Neill. He is located in Breathitt County, but he serves all over central and eastern Kentucky. And our Facebook poll question today was, E.J. Montgomery or Nick Richards, which player will you think will have the biggest impact on Kentucky's basketball team next year? Montgomery taking down 80% of the vote and Nick Richards taking down 20%. And it's not too late to vote. No, you, still, you can still all, day, yep, long, all so. day long. So get on there and vote. If you really like Nick Richards, then show us. Yeah. Guys, when we come back, the Madison Central Baseball team, we got a couple of players over here. we got Bryce Travis, Lucas Myers. When we come back, those guys will join us here at Buffalo Wild Wings. We'll be right back in a few moments on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. At King Brothers Used Cars in Winchester, you don't have to worry about the hassles of dealing with an aggressive salesman. They strive to make you feel comfortable and help you find the car you're looking for at the best price possible. Stop by today and get your key and drive off in a new-to-you vehicle from King Brothers Used Cars on West Lexington Avenue in Winchester. Or stop by their Facebook page for updates and their website, kingbrotherscars.com, to check out their inventory. King Brothers Used Cars, family-owned and time-tested since 1966. Ponchels in Irvin is your year-round stop for Carhartt Isod Lee jeans and boots. Prepare yourself for hunting with a huge selection of Carhartt bibs, coats, and other hunting gear. Don't forget about the big selection of hunting and work boots from Wolverine, Justin, Rocky, and more. As always, Honchels carries all the latest in Kentucky and Estill Engineer apparel and Skechers and New Balance for the little ones. The same great staff, same great personalized service, always at Honchels on the Richmond Road in Irvin. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606-66. Escape to sports with Buffalo Wild Wings. GM Tommy Martin invites you to come watch your favorite team play at Buffalo Wild Wings. The best game day atmosphere and happy hour in town. Menu items as low as $2 each each weekday, 2 to 7, and again 10 till close. Plus wing specials every Tuesday and Thursday. Don't forget to ask your server about the Blazing Rewards program and see how you can earn free food. Buffalo Wild Wings, Richmond Center. This is the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Glad to have you along. And Smith, we are joined by some really good athletes here from Very Madison Very good Central. athletes. Had a Bryce good season. Travis, Devin Eckler, Lucas Myers, and Colton Perkins. I'm proud of myself for getting there. Oh, he did right. that. I couldn't have yeah, done it. And I wasn't even looking at him. I was just I trying to think if I went across there. I know it. Well, guys, first, we're going to have the two seniors on, and Devin and, and uh, Lucas. Let's start with Devin first. First of all, 
Tell us what you want to be when you grow up. Because we ain't going to grow up for a while, but when you do grow up, what do you want to be? Uh, the President of the United States. Look at that. Is that not awesome? So are we going to start with, like, a mayor or start? He's going straight to the big league. He's just... Straight to the White House. All right. You heard it here first. I did. I did. I'm going to be like, we know him. <laughs> well, then let's talk about, first of all, the success that your senior class had throughout the four years at Madison Central. A lot of district championships, obviously, the original championship last year as well. Uh, when you look back on all four years, what one moment stuck out to you? Honestly, I think I would say the regional championship, but I think the biggest moment was probably more losing in districts our sophomore year because it hurt and it was like this is not how we want to end our when we're seniors. So yeah. we had, I think it forced us to work that much harder to get to where we needed to be the next year to win the regional championship. Sometimes a loss like that can be good. Well, not, good not for the in the district that tournament. Year. That's true. That's no, true. but look what it. Yeah, led up motivated to it. You. Yeah. Now, when when you guys look back on that, do you think that kind of fueled you to the next year winning the regional championship? Go ahead, Lucas. You can. Yeah, of course. Like that loss really struck us, and it and it made us realize how much we need to work to be able to improve our game and come together as a family. Because I feel like once we took that next step in improving our game, we came together and we just really set out for that one goal and I was to work hard every day and then leading up to that region championship to prepare for the state tournament. Now, you guys, every single year, you take a trip during the spring break. Yeah, spring going break. Florida. Destin, right? Talk, talk about that trip. Like, what how, What does that mean to you guys? Just get the guys out, you know, play some baseball, get to enjoy some, some brotherly bonding time. That trip really connects us all. Like, that really is our definition of families because, I mean, we take a school bus down yeah, to Florida. Yeah, it's a school bus, right? Every year. Uh, we're all <laughs> compact and tight in there. We got a lot of kids on the team. And then uh, we uh, get to get in hotel rooms, four people to a room, putting our phones up so we're all socializing, playing cards in the room, and we play baseball every day, and it's just really fun. And then uh, shows Mass Central Baseball really well. Now, Devin, you after you guys are done, obviously now school's over with, season's over with. What is the next step for Devin Eckler? What are you going to be doing? Uh, I think I'm just going to mainly focus on a lot of lifting and throwing and playing summer ball to get ready for my college career. Now you're going to yeah. Bellarmine, right? Oh uh, yes, sir. So, what has Bellarmine kind of talked to you about what you'll be doing down there? They told me if I worked hard my freshman year, I'd have a great shot to, to get to start as a true freshman, which is my main goal. So, I feel like that makes me want to work a little bit harder than most. Now, Lucas, kind of an interesting story for you. Is it welding? Am I, am I telling that I'm, right? I'm uh, chemical engineering. Chemical engineering. So just saying that makes my brain hurt. Yeah. But kind of, of give us an idea does. of what that means. What are you going to be doing with that? Well, like, I love chemistry, and engineers basically, you make, you like, the chemists make the product, and the engineer inspects them, and then they send it out. And, you, and I'm trying to get a master's in business with that, so... Uh, you know, I also want to be a, a businessman with that. So you're going to be going to the University of Cincinnati, Cincinnati. correct? Cincinnati. And possibly would be walking on some baseball there? I'm going to try to increase my velocity throughout the summer. If that doesn't work, I'm going to try to play club ball. Okay. Hey, uh, that, listen. Club, hey, that can be fun. Club ball could be more fun than playing on the actual team. Because yeah. you ain't got Less all the stress. stress. You know, you ain't got to worry about wins and losses. You go out there and have fun. And if you win, then it's more fun. Yeah, so. and uh, it'd be really fun to pitch. I mean, keep my baseball going. Yeah. It'd be awesome. So you guys have a tough season. Coach does not give you guys any breaks. Nope. Tell us about how you guys feel about that. I think we enjoyed it because we got to play a lot of the top ranked teams and I feel like it was just one of those you always, to be the best you gotta play the best. Yeah. So we always wanted to play the top teams and I feel like we got to see every team's ace. So I thought we were well prepared going into the tournament time. Right, it does. Now how did you guys feel about beating Scott County? Oh, that was awesome. I mean, yeah. we beat them three times in a row since, uh, you know, the region championship. And, it, uh, you know, rivals, but then they beat us in basketball and football. Right. So we were like, let's beat them in baseball this year. So. <laughs> Some extra well, motivation. we got one win there for sure. Cause yeah. the, the other two really hurt, and you all knocking them off in the first round of the region was a big deal. Yeah. Talk about the loss to Tate Creek. Obviously, yes. they had a really good pitcher that they threw against you all in the regional they're still tournament. in it, right? Yeah, they're still in the state tournament. They're still tournament, in the state right? tournament. Oh, yeah. So whenever you look back on that game, what is one thing that you guys maybe could have done different to change the outcome there? Um, yeah, and that's a really hard question because I really felt like we were together and we were prepared and 
every time someone would step on the mound, I'd be confident. Every time we are up to bat, I'm confident. I just think, you know, there's going to be good games and yeah, there's going to be bad games. games. And yeah. I really thought we had a good chance to win the whole thing. And we played a really good Tate's Creek team, and uh, they beat us. So that's the sad part about baseball. Now, when you look at the lineage of guys that have come through Madison Central and are playing at the next level, you know, you got guys that are playing at, at EKU right now, uh, Logan Thomason, um, Ferris, yeah, and Jacob, Jacob Ferris. Ferris. You've got guys that are in the major leagues now that played at Madison Central or in, in the farm system, excuse me. So does that give you the confidence just knowing how awesome this system is of baseball? You, you always have a shot to keep advancing in your career? I think it speaks to how well our coaches are because I know our, our former players that talk, came back and talked to me and said, your high school practice is just like a college practice. Yeah. So, I think it just shows how well our coaches prepare us for the next level and push us. Well, let's pass these mics to the juniors here. We've got Colton Perkins here and Bryce Travis. Now, Bryce, your brother was a senior, right? Yes, he so was. So talk about what it means to have your older brother on the same team as you. It was crazy. I mean, every game I would, like, he was the closing guy, so he came in a lot of games, and it was just really cool being able to look up on the mound and see him there, and especially coming in after me for certain games. Like, it was – so surreal seeing him like on the mound. I mean, obviously it was my last time with him yeah. uh, in this season, but it was definitely worth worth the worth it throughout. There you go. Now, Colton, you played first base, is that right? Yes, sir. So, talk about what your duties are as the first baseman. Um, well, this was actually my first time playing first base at the beginning of the year, um, and Bryce, who played first base last year, helped me out a lot. But really, the main thing was catch the ball and don't let the ball by me. So easy, right? yeah, easy. Yeah. Easy. Just try to hit, done. focus on hitting, and play the glove whenever you need to. What so was it, it like switching? I mean, where were you at before? You yeah. I was catching. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now, what, what was it like making that transition? Transition. Because it seems like a lot of guys in Major League Baseball, those if if you play one of those positions, you can play the other one. So what was that transition like for you? See, catching for me, like I grew up catching and playing third base, so I've always kind of been able to play infield. But catching is really about hands, and first base, the thing that has in common with third base catching at first is everyone has to have good hands to play each position. So first base, it's really just got to catch the ball. So I mean, catching, all you got to do is catch the ball. So it's pretty easy to go from one to the other. You just do your stand knees? Up at first yeah, base. I was yeah, gonna say, do your true. knees hurt from no. all the catching <laughs> over the years? No, not anymore. They used not to. anymore, I would say. This senior class, a lot of seniors, a lot of really important guys that you guys are going to be losing heading into next year. What have you learned from these guys? I'll ask you both that same question. Well, let's start with you first. Um, majority, other than like the basic, you know, catching, Ben's taught me a lot with catching and other people helping me with base running or hitting, but it's how to be a family and how to lead. Uh, this guy right here is a big one, big family. He's a huge leader and a huge part of what brought everybody close together. Same with Eckler. So the biggest thing is they've taught us how in the next year, for the upcoming season, to make everybody prepared and bring everybody together and try to win the whole thing again. It is, it's definitely a tough loss losing these guys. I mean, they were the greatest group of seniors I've had throughout. I mean, I, obviously I've been closer to all of them, but it was they really taught us the leadership portion of it, and it wasn't just like the baseball portion too. Like even in the classroom, on the field, just like – Overall, people they tried to make sure that the whole team was being better at every aspect of life rather than just one. Well, when I talked to Coach Roof today. He said he was going to send some guys over that he knew could handle the microphone. These guys are doing a great job. They are. So, wh whenever you know these guys are going to be going, you know, moving on to the college level, what will you two specifically take into next year, knowing that you guys have got to step up now and be leaders? I think uh, going into next year, we just want to make sure we take it one one step at a time. Like we don't want to get ahead of ourselves and then end up uh, overlooking the team in the early rounds or anything like that. Like we got to take it one game at a time, starting with in the fall with practices and even lifting in the summer. We've talked about it today, just getting the guys in the weight room and having everybody working out, trying to get as good as we can for next year. I would say uh, don't take it for granted. You know. It's not that we have to practice; it's that we get to practice every day. Yeah. We don't. We don't get. We don't have to ride on a 14-hour bus ride to Florida. We get to. We get to spend time with each other every day, and we get to try to get better every single day. So, the time in the weight room, take it seriously. Want to be there? Be there early. Be the first one there. Be the last one to leave. Just that kind of thing every day. Now, see, we need I think to show this. Positive. Yeah, we need to show like younger kids what he just said. That's pretty. You're cool. exactly right. Because the, there's so many kids nowadays. They don't want to be out in the heat. They don't want to put in the work. They yeah. just want the win. I don't wins. either. But I'm saying I need to listen to what he just said myself. But now, I believe you just won a big award this past week, right? Last uh, week. 
most intelligent. Oh, yeah, I guess. You pass out most, most intelligent? intelligent? <laughs> intellectual. What does that mean? Most intellectual. Uh, Madison Central, I guess. Is yeah. that in the history of the school or no, just for this just year? just for this class. Okay, okay. <laughs> I guess you can say, yeah. So now, I you go it. to school with her daughter. Yes. Does she ever give you any, like, weird stories about her mom, like, singing and dancing or anything? Uh, I don't, I've never heard no. any. Dang, I was hoping you'd get one out of No, no. <laughs> Ma Mallory's a good kid. Right. She wouldn't tell on me. Well, <laughs> before we let you guys go, is there anything that you would like to say to the fans or your teammates? I mean, uh, just as maybe a thank you to some of the – and you guys are going to keep moving on. Hopefully play – I mean, you're going to try to play at Cincinnati. You're going to be playing at Bellarmine. So we're going to try to follow you guys into your, your collegiate careers as well. Is there anything you'd like to say to the fans out there? And yeah, I mean, uh, we have great, great crowds for, like, every single game. People show up and support us. So thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, – I appreciate all my coaches for putting in the time to, out of their day to make us better and to, to show us what it's like to be a family, all in, uh, finding that one goal. And obviously these guys right here, um, they're my brothers for life, and I just want to say thank you to them. So I love them to death. Mr. Uh, President. I just want to say thank you to all, anybody who had a part to do with Madison Central Baseball, from fans, friends, family, coaches, teammates, everything. I just wanted to say thank you for making this the best five years of my life. And yeah. just, he looks a politician, doesn't he? Does. he? I mean, he's got the voice for it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He's, I'll, 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 he's got a future in it, that's for sure. <laughs> well, before we he's let got, you guys go, we'll get, we'll get Colton and uh, and Mr. Travis on the mics one more time. Bryce, uh, you look at the the region next year, you're going to have great crossing coming in, Scott County kind of dividing up. Do you all have a go already set for next year? Uh, or you, you're just going to try to wait till? This, this season, kind of let it go by, and then whenever you guys get together next year, will you set that goal? My goal is the same as always. I always want to win the state championship. Like, I want to be the best best player on the field and the best team out there every time. And so that's kind of the goal going in. I want to be the best I can be right now and then work my way up until we get to that, that chance. Colton? Uh, we've said it all year. We're going to keep saying it. We've got one goal, and it's state. So we just try to win the day every day and try to get better every single day. There you go. That is Colton Perkins, Lucas Myers, Devin Eckler and Bryce Travis from Madison Central's baseball team. These guys had a tremendous year. They've had a tremendous seniors run for the Madison Central baseball team over the last three or four years. Look forward to watching you guys continue your high school career and you guys at the next level. Good luck, and we'll be uh, keeping up with you guys, okay? Thank you, sir. Uh, that is the Madison Central baseball team. When we come back, the NBA finals are still going on. We haven't talked much NBA, but when we come back, Samantha, I will give you one guarantee when we come back here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show, we are live at Buffalo Wild Wings, coming at you live on WBON-TV. At King Brothers Used Cars in Winchester, you don't have to worry about the hassles of dealing with an aggressive salesman. They strive to make you feel comfortable and help you find the car you're looking for at the best price possible. Stop by today and get your key and drive off in a new-to-you vehicle from King Brothers Used Cars on West Lexington Avenue in Winchester. Or stop by their Facebook page for updates and their website, kingbrotherscars.com, to check out their inventory. King Brothers Used Cars, family-owned and time-tested since 1966. Ponchels and Irvin is your year-round stop for Carhartt Isod Lee jeans and boots. Prepare yourself for hunting with a huge selection of Carhartt bibs, coats, and other hunting gear. Don't forget about the big selection of hunting and work boots from Wolverine, Justin, Rocky, and more. As always, Honchels carries all the latest in Kentucky and Estill Engineer apparel and Skechers and New Balance for the little ones. The same great staff, same great personalized service always at Honchels on the Richmond Road in Irvin. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606-66. 662990. Escape to sports with Buffalo Wild Wings. GM Tommy Martin invites you to come watch your favorite team play at Buffalo Wild Wings. The best game day atmosphere and happy hour in town. Menu items as low as $2 each each weekday, 2 to 7, and again 10 till close. Plus, wing specials every Tuesday and Thursday. Don't forget to ask your server about the Blazing Rewards program and see how you can earn free food. Buffalo Wild Wings, Richmond Center.
at Buffalo Wild Wings. This is the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. It's weird saying that, isn't it? I got to get used to it. I got to get used yeah. to hearing it. Well, listen, you know, we, we, we <laughs> it's had... It's a new week. Before we get into our NBA talk, we had a pretty cool little uh, golf scramble over the weekend. We'll have Austin pull that up for us. It's our King Brothers Used Cars. A uh, little local player spotlight. And our local players this week are a couple of guys uh, from a Madison... Or one of the guys is the Madison Central golf coach himself. As the Hanger Cup Golf Tournament was held Friday and sun through Sunday this past weekend, the annual member guest event was held at the University Club of Arlington in Richmond and again had a full field of players from the area, including our own Kelly Wallingford, the owner of the station. But his picture is not on the screen because he did not win or come in second. <laughs> We're not going to say a single bad word about that either. <laughs> but the winners <laughs> from seven different flights went we on to Kelly. compete in the shootout on Sunday afternoon. Congratulations to the runners-up, Chris Childers and Kyle Congleton of Richmond. And the year's overall champions are Tom Pendergrass of Richmond and his guest, Hugh Mitchell of Lexington. So those guys are the winners of and the runners-up in the Hanger Cup Golf Tournament, which was held at Arlington Golf Course over the weekend. And I'm that sure. is our King Brothers Used Cars local player spotlight. Kingbrothers.com uh, for your place to find a new to you vehicle. All kinds of a nice selection over there. Make sure to check out kingbrotherscars.com to view their entire inventory or stop by and see them on West Lexington Avenue in Winchester. So, are you a big golfer? You golf a lot? I used to play golf, and I just haven't in a very long time. We ought to do, like, a, a sports show from the golf course someday. That'd be kind of cool. Or the it's, Richmond Raceway. Both How those, fun would yes. that be? We could even be in the car while we're doing the show. Yeah. I think Jack Burford has an idea about that, too. So, that should be fun. Can you can you drive? <laughs> we, should, we should race drive. ourselves. <laughs> yeah, you get the Traverse, I'll get the Equinox, and then we'll race ourselves. I'll have the Corvette. That's not even fair. <laughs> no, it's not. I'll just not. beat you with the Equinox then. Oh. Then I'll just knock you the other the way. Equi oh, yeah. You'll hit the Corvette with the Equinox. Yeah, yeah. Do some damage. Got insurance. Oh, Got insurance. Yeah. You, you know what? The problem with that is you'd have to catch me first. That's true. That's I don't true. think you could. That's true. <laughs> well, let's talk about the NBA Finals before we go off the air. Yes. Quick. So, obviously, Golden State. This is the best time of year for the NBA. It is. It, it is. really it's is. The last time. month. It's, this is whenever it gets really And serious. then we have the draft after that. So, it's kind of exciting. Yeah, me. and we'll talk more about the draft as we get closer. Right. To it. It's about three weeks away at this point. Yep. So, we'll talk more about it when we get closer. But last night, Golden State. Game two. Down five at the half. They had a huge run in the third quarter. They come from as behind. normal. To take the lead. And then they <laughs> hold on late in the game. Yeah. You have. Three or four guys going down with Andrew. injury. I mean, it was like a Thompson band probably day. won't even come back next no, game. No, you think? They're saying today that he is. He might. Uh, he told his coach he would play. Now, he's supposed to have an MRI yeah. tomorrow. But, but I mean, him this is saying the NBA it finals. and them allowing him to play. Yeah. I mean, because well, you don't want to play injured. It's the NBA Finals. If you are 60%, you're going to play. Like, if yeah. you're not going to be able to, like, if you're going to be able to go up there and actually play and not re injure yourself, right. you're going to play. Because for future. Next season. Yeah. I mean, well, you don't want to hurt yourself and not, you know, be able to play the next season. Well, and all these guys, too, they've got, you know, these big contracts. They have all this money that they're trying to, to make. Right. But they're going for history right now, trying to win their third straight NBA Finals four out of the last five years. And these guys are a true dynasty and a true legendary basketball franchise they now. Are. And what I think was the most impressive thing about the game last night was the play of DeMarcus Cousins. Oh, yeah. He came back from injury about two weeks earlier than expected. He was not supposed to come back and play in no. the NBA playoffs. And he came back and played a major impact on that win last night for the Warriors. Especially in the second half because he didn't come out strong. I think no. he, he turned over the got ball. He got in some foul trouble early on in the game. But the second half, well, near the end of the first half and then the yeah. whole second half, he was like a different player. He finally he got his groove back. He did. And, <laughs> and I think for Cousins, it's, too, it's a big thing for him because – he is the kind of player that he didn't really have to have the ball to dominate late in the game. I mean, neither <laughs> team defense. One either team could get a basket to go down, and Cousins was just standing over top of everybody <laughs> grabbing <laughs> rebounds. Like, like a big so, old I mean, that dude. was a big deal that he could just go up there and get the rebound yeah. and give his yeah. team a chance to run some of that clock down. Yeah. And if that game goes another 90 seconds, I think Toronto comes back and wins. Yeah. But oh, yeah. because of the defense they switched to late in the game, but it was just such a sloppy ending in Golden State You're able right. to hang on thanks to some clutch play from Andre Iguodala. Um, How crazy is it, though, that Golden State won in Toronto 
with so many injured players. Yeah. And so, I mean, Kevin Durant's not back. I mean, they're saying he could come back game three, possibly maybe game four. Yeah, game four so, is probably the most likely, likely scenario, but he right. has a shot to play in game three. Right. And what is, it won't even be close. What is good for Golden State is that these games are, you're good having like two or three days in between each game. Yeah. You allow your for guys, the old to, guys to recover. Yeah, and especially with all these injuries that are continuing to pile yeah, up. Yeah. Now I can't say that they're not old. What to, What yesterday's game showed me is that Golden State is the is by far the superior team. Yes. You know, Toronto for sure. can muck it up. They can have a lucky night. You know, Golden State can have a bad shooting night. But for them to go on the road with all these things going wrong and to win the game right. just proves to me without a shadow of a doubt that Golden State is the superior team yeah. in this NBA Finals. Kawhi Leonard cannot do it by himself. No. And he just can't. And and the way Golden State's playing him is, you know, we're going to let you get yours, but we're going to stop everybody else. Yeah, and that is it. That's right. Working. That's exactly yeah. what they're doing. And I don't blame them because, you know, the other guys have not showed that they can beat you. Let yeah. Kawhi go off for 40 points, but stop everybody yeah. else. And now, the other guy, the ball game. right. Now, the other, what's his name? Van Vliet. Van Vliet, Van Vliet. Yep. I mean, he had a, a lot of points. Um, yeah. 13 I, points, but he's he's got to he's got shoot a, more than that. He's got to, I think he's he's got to be a catalyst for them off the bench, kind of give them some energy and provide some playmaking because some of their starters, Lowry, Green, they've been struggling thus far. Yes. But now, what, what Van Vliet's issue Green is had a good game, first game. The first game. And Lowry did too. But I think Van Vliet's issue has been is that where he's a role player, he plays much better at home. It'll be interesting to see if he can continue that on the road to and Oakland. go to state. It ought to be a fun series, Here's my especially guarantee. Now, now that it's tied up. I said I was going to give you a guarantee. My guarantee is that this game, this series is done by six games, at, at least. It, it, it'll be in game six, Golden State will either win it or it could be done before them. They could, they could win all three at home in this series. Be they over. could, but will they? Uh, I think well, they throw it for media game. and the money. Uh, the NBA likes to see game seven. So I know it. That. I'd hate to say that they would do that, yeah. but sometimes it happens. <laughs> another another jam-packed show. I want to thank you to Randy O'Neill for giving us a prediction on the upcoming Belmont Horse World Race. World That's who we're going with. And the guys from Madison Central Baseball team. We had Colton Perkins, Lucas Myers, Devin Eckler, and uh, Bryce Travis from the baseball team. Thank you to Coach Steve Ruth for allowing those guys to come on and talk to us as well. And they were great. Really good. Very right. well really spoken good. for yeah. fine young men. Uh, for all of us and all of our great sponsors like King Brothers Used Cars yes. over in Winchester, the law office of Patrick O'Neill, Honchos Men's Store. Listen, Honchos, Father's Day is right around the corner. It is. If I don't, don't have anything. I'm coming to Honchos. For the perfect gift for Dad. Make sure to get over to Honchos. They've got you know all the nice uh, dress gear if you want a, little, a nice uh, sports coat for Dad. Izod golf shirts. Did you go in there and uh, pick something out? A nice Carhartt boots. You know, all over there at Honchos. They've got everything you would want for Dad at Honchos. Speedos. Stop by. I don't think they've got those there. <laughs> okay. Has John already got one? No. No, he does not. He's going. Have oh. you seen the new blue jean Speedos? Yeah, I, I got them on back order right now. <laughs> okay. Coming in. You need Should be some. here any day. I'm okay. on the show next week. All right. I'll wait. <laughs> For Jaden Johnson back at Studio Control, our man Austin Hanks producing the show on the TV side tonight. She is Samantha Burford. I am Michael Watkins. Thank you for watching live from Buffalo Wild Wings. This has been the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. At King Brothers Used Cars in Winchester, you don't have to worry about the hassles of dealing with an aggressive salesman. They strive to make you feel comfortable and help you find the car you're looking for at the best price possible. Stop by today and get your key and drive off in a new-to-you vehicle from King Brothers Used Cars on West Lexington Avenue in Winchester. Or stop by their Facebook page for updates and their website, kingbrotherscars.com, to check out their inventory. King Brothers Used Cars, family-owned and time-tested since 1966. Honchels in Irvin is your year-round stop for Carhartt Isod Lee jeans and boots. Prepare yourself for hunting with a huge selection of Carhartt bibs, coats, and other hunting gear. Don't forget about the big selection of hunting and work boots from Wolverine, Justin, Rocky, and more. As always, Honchels carries all the latest in Kentucky and Estill Engineer apparel and Skechers and New Balance for the little ones. The same great staff, same great personalized service, always at Honchels on the Richmond Road in Irvin.
Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606 660 Escape to sports with Buffalo Wild Wings. GM Tommy Martin invites you to come watch your favorite team play at Buffalo Wild Wings. The best game day atmosphere and happy hour in town. Menu items as low as $2 each, each weekday, 2 to 7, and again 10 till close. Plus, wing specials every Tuesday and Thursday. Don't forget to ask your server about the Blazing Rewards program and see how you can earn free food. Buffalo Wild Wings, Richmond Center. 